I don't know what I'm going to do today. I got to record my review of Die Hard in 4K. But I feel like I should be doing something special for it. What am I going to do? I got it. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavanaugh's Corner. I hope you enjoyed the new intro. Uh, it took me a while to get that finished, but we composed our own music, uh, shot everything in-house. Literally, most of that was shot in my house. So uh, it was a good time, and I figured uh, if I was going to review possibly the best action movie ever made, I might as well give it an action kind of intro. So today, as, uh, as you've probably already seen, uh, the title and everything, I'm going to be talking about Die Hard on 4K, this bad boy right here. It's the 30th anniversary of the film, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people consider this to be the best action movie ever made. I'm kind of one of those people, honestly. I think this is one of the best action movies ever made. Uh, it is a blast, even after 30 years of it being out. It is still a very, very entertaining and just a, just a damn good movie. Just everything about it is fantastic. Bruce Willis, obviously, as John McClane, the protagonist, he is just at the top of his game in this. And it really is the movie that put him on the map. And also, the late, great Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber, the, the leader of the terrorist group that takes over the Nakatomi building in this. He is another just absolutely outstanding actor just at the top of his game in this movie. Uh, the director, uh, John McTiernan, who I think is actually still doing time right now, ironically enough. Uh, not sure what's going on there. I think he purged himself or something under Teth. I don't know what the hell it was. But anyway, uh, director John McTiernan, who is a great, great director, also directed Predator and uh, also did uh, Last Action Hero, Medicine Man. Uh, he's done a lot of fantastic movies. I Yes, I actually do enjoy Medicine Man. And uh, Last Action Hero, I, I, I really love those movies. Predator is one of my favorite action movies as well. And he really does do a phenomenal job in this movie of really capturing all of the action, all of the character moments. It's just a, it's just a really well done movie all around. It's a, a very, 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 very enjoyable film. And it's a movie that I've rewatched and, you know, rewatched and rewatched a million times over. And it's another movie that I've purchased God knows how many times. This is probably the third or fourth time I've bought this movie. But uh, as it being on 4K, I figured, you know what? It's 4K. Let's see how it is. And I will tell you right now, I do not regret my purchase. This is a phenomenal transfer from 20th Century Fox. They did an outstanding job with this film. Mainly the reason why I think it's outstanding is because this movie truly has never looked as clear as it does on this on this version. The 4K transfer, they were able to completely transfer the original negative as far as I know. And they really did just make it as pure of a transfer as humanly possible. Which means there is a layer of grain all throughout the film. Now some people are not going to like this. Uh, a few people, when I reviewed Terminator 2, and I mentioned they took the grain out from the film, got really upset with me because I said you shouldn't take the grain out from the film. I'm going to say it again. You can't take the grain out of a picture without it losing its fidelity. Uh, it's kind of like an onion, and that, uh, if you can imagine, the movie is an onion, and the grain is a layer of that onion. Well, as you chop away the layers, you lose pieces of the film. And in this, they wise, they had, I should say, 20th Century Fox wised up and they decided to not remove any grain from the picture at all. So there is a fine layer of grain throughout the film and it actually works for this movie. Again, this movie was filmed in 1988. It was filmed on 35 millimeter film. So you get an instant 4K definition from that 35 millimeter, which is great, which makes for a great viewing experience, but also you know, that film grain is going to be there when you film on that kind of stock. 
it's going to be there. And I have to say, it totally is awesome in this movie. Uh, the picture is sharper than it ever has been. The colors in this, uh, thanks to the HDR on this disc, the colors on this are mind-blowing on this version. But there are certain scenes that look completely different now on this version than it did on the older Blu-rays or the DVDs or anything like that. The opening of the film now has a very beautiful orange hue to it, which I thought was very interesting, uh, showing, you know, John landing in, in, in L.A., and that orange shoe is kind of like a welcoming kind of thing because, you know, he's coming to L.A. to visit his wife. So it's a nice touch. Also, uh, the scenes where John is running around Nakatomi in the rooms where there's a lot of harsh, like, fluorescent light bulbs, you do get a different kind of greenish teal hue in this version from those lights that you just don't get in any other version of the film. And it really does make it like you're really there with him. Also, explosions in this. Uh, I have to say, the big standout for me is the scene where John jumps off the roof of the building to escape the, the big explosion that's going to happen. That scene is blindingly bright when, when that explosion goes off. As well as any scene where the little hockey puck flashbang grenades go off the screen turns a blinding bright white. And it's, it's really crazy. If you have a TV that is HDR uh, capable, you're going to have a hell of a time with this disc. It is a real, real winner for that home theater experience. Also, again, this disc does not have Dolby Vision built into it, which is too bad. But the HDR10 that's here is just really, really well done. And the colors you get, even though they're not really, uh, I don't want to say they're really vibrant, you do get some really nice touches here and there that just enhances the quality of the film. My piece uh, that I would say about this that is a little disappointing, because everything so far was very, very much, uh, you know, very well done, is the fact that it's the same sound mix as before. And honestly, I was really hoping that, you know, for the 30th anniversary, they would do a Dolby Atmos or a DTS-X sound mix. It's not, it's the same uh, DTS mix, I think, as before. I think it's DTS. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's DTS uh, HD Master Audio, which is just a 5.1. And it's really, you know, it's really nothing too crazy. It's a very good sound mix. Again, there's nothing wrong with the sound mix. But I was really hoping to get something a little more immersive. But you take what you can get. I'm just glad that the movie's in 4K, to be honest. I love the way this movie looked. There are really no special features on the disc. Uh, they're the same commentaries and everything on the 4K disc that you get with the regular Blu-ray. The set does come with the regular movie on Blu-ray and the digital copy. I didn't really see anything too crazy about the transfer on the regular Blu-ray. It kind of looked almost identical to the old Blu-rays I had before. Nothing too crazy there. Um, the digital copy, again, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but it is included. Uh, so It's nice to have, so you can take Die Hard with you on the go. Again, kind of a nice thing to have. But overall... I would say Die Hard on 4K is the best the movie has ever looked. Again, I'm very thankful that 20th Century Fox wisened up and did not remove any of the grain from the picture. Again, if you're not a big grain person, you're going to want to stay away from this disc because the entire movie has a very fine layer of grain. It really does add to the filmic look of the movie, and it kind of makes you nostalgic for those days, but... Um, Another John McTiernan movie that I always talk about when I mention uh, DNR, a digital noise reduction, was Predator. When Predator came out on a special edition version of, uh, of the Blu-ray, because there's actually two versions of the Blu-ray. There's a special edition, and then there's an older uh, Blu-ray. And the special edition, they DNR'd the whole movie, and it made uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger look like a Barbie doll uh, all throughout it. It was, it was terrible and you really lost a lot of the finer details of the film. In this, they just enhanced those details. They didn't touch anything of the movie. They just enhanced the picture. They enhanced the colors. Again, they didn't do much for the sound, but the picture quality 
is a winner here, and it's not quite, um, it's not quite like you know the movie that you would put on. It's not like Planet Earth two or anything like that, where you know you show off your home theater with it. But if you enjoyed this movie, this is the most pristine uh, transfer of the film that I have ever seen in my life. It is outstanding. I absolutely loved Die Hard on 4K. It is a very, very much a definite buy if you're looking for this movie. If you have a 4K TV and you want to see this movie in the best quality possible, go out and pick it up. It is amazing. Anyway, I'm Andrew Cavanaugh. Thank you for coming back to Cavanaugh's Corner, and we'll see you on the next one. Good night.